It is now time for the Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters. It is fabulous Friday. Thanks so much for joining me. It is absolutely my pleasure to be with you. This is my favorite time of the day. Well, not necessarily my favorite time of the day, but this is my favorite thing to do at this time of the day. This is such a blast for me. In fact, last night, you know, was really a great evening. Tom and I were out. We ran into, you know, one of, it's nothing like running into uh, tigers, if you will. In this case here, we ran into the son of a tiger. So good morning to Nick. And hopefully Nick in Miami is listening because during our conversation yesterday, or last evening, I should say, maybe it was in beer number two or three, you know, I got the idea of what I wanted to actually talk about this morning. Some folks have said, you know, how, how is it that I figure out what it is that I want to, you know, discuss? Some, sometimes I plan things out a little bit more so. It's just really impromptu with regard to whatever just simply the universe is thrown at me right now. And, you know, if I could change your life, I could change anybody's life. You know, it would be right now to take you to a place of strength for me. It's this spot that's showing up right here over my shoulder. This is the place that I like to be able to go to whenever I have to make any kind of decision. And certainly when I start out this show, it's all about making decisions. If we just took a quick spin around the uh, world here, if I was taking you around the world, you'd see that the futures are relatively flat. Been kind of going a little bit up and down all morning. Nothing really significant. You know, the ES Mini is down a couple of points. Dow down maybe about 20 points right now. NASDAQ is flat. In fact, uh, you know, NASDAQ, you've got Google, you know, that came out with earnings yesterday. We're going to watch how Google trades this morning during our third segment. Uh, Google trading down 47 uh, bucks right now. IBM in the pre-market. IBM is trading up. Where's my IBM? It's up about $5.15. Uh, you know, if you took a look at the four ETFs out there, you'd see that the uh, diamonds are down 18 cents. The spies are down 30 cents. Q's down 31, small caps down uh, 12 pennies, king dollar up 8 cents. And uh, if you went around Europe, what you'd see is uh, relatively flat out there. FTSE down 2 points, DAX down 7, and Asia was up nice last night. Shanghai up 24, the Hang Seng was up 167, the uh, Nikkei up uh, 126 points, uh, light sweet crude trading down $1.33. So that's just kind of, you know, relatively flat, no, uh, no real excitement out there. And so the conversation last night, you know, it's always so good to listen. You know, the when when you were born, we were we were given two ears, right, and one mouth. And what I've learned is so important to just be able to listen to others. You know, being a good listener, when you can listen to others, then you can all of a sudden become a good listener to yourself. You know, we talked last week or over the last couple of weeks about the importance of being able to, you know, create your your list, if you if you will, your we we worked on our toys and our rewards, you know, what were the outcomes that we wanted in life, what were the strong reasons why, and the importance of being able to take your dreams and turn them into a vision. See, the important thing is being able to listen to yourself. Well think about it like this. If you're not able to listen to others, how well are you going to actually be able to listen to yourself, what's going on in the inside? Now, that's a little sidetrack because what was really interesting last night as I was speaking with uh, Nick was we were just simply talking about and his desire to want to be able to learn the math side of the business. And he's got a son that's 11, going to be turning 12, not to uh, in a near future here. And my suggestion was, why don't you teach little Nick how to play the money game right now? Because and, and, and the response was, well, he's really not a math person, if you will. And I thought that was really such a great segue because the question that I would pose when we take a look at patterns, is this math imitating art or art imitating math? It doesn't really matter. Well, the point that I made to Nick last night, and not this is the point that I want to be able to make to you, is that the best traders out there, the best traders out there, in fact, this is a little bit of a conversation that I was having with even one of my clients uh, through email yesterday. And the best traders out there have got this uh, intuition, if you will. They've got an instinct. They have the ability to visualize what's going to happen ahead. You see, the patterns that we trade, the patterns that I love to trade, the patterns that we'll look at in a moment, they're, you know, we take a, we call them Gartley's butterflies, and they're leading indicator patterns. And what an artist does, what an artist has the ability to do, which can't be taught, the intuition, what a athlete that is successful has the ability to do, whether you are a uh, player of an instrument or you're a player of your pad, if you will, your palette, if you will, if, you, if you're just simply being able to paint a picture, 
what you have, think about it like this. When somebody is when somebody is painting a picture, an artist, do you think that they are focused on the last moment? Do you think they're focused on the present? Or do you think they're focused on the next moment? You see, in my opinion, when you take a look at an artist, and so what this is why I really want to understand because you know we've got folks that are right side, left side brained, if you will. You know, I am more of a math person. If you will, math science, you know, that clearly comes out in all the analytical things that I do. Each one of my clients will absolutely be able to tell you. But I've taught myself, if you will, the art side of the business. It was really my children that were able to help to teach me as I watched, I listened, as I observed them. But the reality is, the reason why folks that aren't this, I can teach math. There is no question that I can teach you at least the math that you need to understand inside any chart. But if you are a person that is not math oriented and you are more of the art person, you absolutely have the skill set. In fact, you have, you have an edge over most traders because what an artist is doing is they're really able to visualize and see the moment that's ahead of them. You think about it. If you're painting a picture, whatever it is that you're looking at, yes, you've got the focus of, it depends how fast it is that you're doing it, but you're absolutely looking ahead. Look at, take a pilot, for example. You know, if you are in an airplane flying, you know, do you want your pilot, do you want him focused on the prior minute? Do you want him focused right now where he's at? Or do you also want him to make sure that he's got an eye out with regard to what it is that's coming ahead? So you've got one eye on the present, you've got another eye on what it is that's coming ahead. So if you folks, and it was so so good because, you know, I don't think I really talked about this much, but I can tell you that it's so funny how the universe works because most of yesterday's conversations, if you will, really that I was having with uh, with clients, tigers or what have you, really was dealing with the art side, was really dealing with the visualization side, but now at least giving me the opportunity to be able to communicate to you the importance of being able to visualize what's coming ahead and the mere fact that if you are a great athlete, if you are a great musician, if you are a great artist, whatever your artwork is, we can teach you we can teach you the math side of it because the reality is, as Tom was even pointing out last night, you know, if you take a look at the at your arm, at your body, it's all math related. But when we come and take a look, you know, the proportions of everything, it's all Fibonacci related, quite frankly. And that's what it is that we take a look at. We take a look at the screens. You know, if you take a look at the screens, it's going to pop right above my uh, shoulder right now or maybe it's going to be the full screen that's out there. And what you're going to be looking at, you're just simply going to be looking at patterns that are out here. If we take a look at the ES Mini right now, I'm going to go ahead and pop this up on the screen. And to just be able to teach you, in essence, five numbers, five numbers, retracement numbers, which is just like in life or in business where you make a huge effort forward. You know, if you're working out, you know, and today is a day about health. You got to love Fridays around here because of 12 to 1. We got Mr. Nico DeHaan getting us health and fit. But you take a look at exercise, you know, exercise, you, you exercise, you get to one level, then maybe you start to retrace a little bit. Well, the retracement that you have, with regard to life in the markets, you're going to retrace to 0 0.382, 618, and 786. It's going to be very easy to take an artist and show them where to draw, where your two points are. We're using a ruler. It's just a mechanical thing. There's functions inside most trading systems, so we can show that. We can also show the expansion. The expansion is when you punch through that point, that plateau, where you're at. And folks do that in life. You go back and you take a look at your life, where you started, where you've come from, what you've gone through. And you can see times in life where you were coming up, you had a plateau, you pulled back, and then you punched through. Well, in our life, whether it's trading the markets or it's in real life, if your retracement is real shallow and then you really put the effort in it and you punch through, you're going to do more than a one-to-one -one move, meaning where you started from and where you came. Two, and then you pull back and you punch through it, folks, you're going to do more than a move because you've got a lot of energy left. If you pull back further, maybe to that point six one eight area, you're going to just do a normal one-to-one -one move, meaning, you know, if you came from, if you came from here making uh, 50,000, you went to 100,000, you drop back to uh, whatever that might be, uh, say 25, I know that's 50%, but that's just easy math right now as I'm doing the show, then you're just simply going to go from, uh, you know, you're going to end up getting to the $75,000 level. You go back and you take a look at it, you measure it. In fact, this time of the year, usually, you know, when you're this age, if you will, usually the Social Security Administration is sending you a, uh, uh, your, your annual statement over the history of your life, how much money you made, how much you've actually contributed to a fund that may or may not be there, you know, for, for each of us. That's a different story. But the reality is what I want to be able to teach you is that these numbers, 
Is it art imitating math or is it math imitating art? Well, expansion numbers that we look at are 1.272, 1.618. They exist all over the universe. And if you are an artist, I can teach you to be an incredible trader because you've got that instinct, that intuition, the ability to have one eye forward and one eye just a little bit ahead. That's why Wayne Gretzky was the hockey player that he was, folks. Wayne Gretzky. Now, I'm doing a, a webcast next Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.30. Part of that, folks, and this is something else that came out in yesterday's conversation, part of that is showing you how do you get your dream clients. And, folks, I want you to sign up for that. Or I want you to go ahead and get somebody in your life. I want you to help somebody get through their B point because I can absolutely help them do that. I can show them the art of business and how it is that you can have any dream client that you want in your life so that you can grow your business. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. X-Story Gold Mines, an NYSE Amex listed company trading under the symbol XG, is slated to be the newest gold silver producer in Argentina. X-Story is forecast to produce more than 250 million in bullion annually beginning in 2013 at a cash cost of less than $200 for each ounce of gold produced. That forecast will make X-Story one of the highest margin operators in South America and a sector leader in the mining industry. X-Story has 50 million in its treasury, having spent over 60 million to date on drilling and engineering. The ultimate size of its Argentina discovery could be determined by year end as results from the six drills operating at the site are fully assessed. To find out more about X-Story Gold Mines and their exciting growth potential, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex under the symbol XG. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. In 1929, Joe Kennedy had $4 million. By 1932, he grew it into $180 million. All this during the Great Depression. The good thing about economic difficult times is that the worst economy can produce the best rewards in the shortest period of time. In fact, during the last 130 years, 61% of that time has been spent in recession. How would you like the strategies that are bulletproof against the turmoil of our economy in these fast-changing times? For the last quarter of a century, I've studied and used the secrets used by millionaires and billionaires. These are bulletproof strategies that will absolutely astonish you. I'd love to introduce you to these concepts that will absolutely change your life. You'll learn the three ways to grow any business exponentially. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, and host of The Trader's Edge, both seen daily at TFNN.com. If you're even a little bit interested in accumulating wealth, providing a better life for you and your family, then go to TFNN.com, look under Breaking News, and click on the Get Steve Rhodes Special Report link, and I'll email you this free report, Pathways to Wealth. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market, something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. 
Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Hope you're having a, a fabulous Friday. And uh, hopefully you're going to have just an incredible weekend. We've got some uh, football coming on, a couple, uh, a couple of playoff games, and just taking a look at the money section here in USA Today. And this is music to my ears. And the right direction, it's, uh, Apple is uh, looking to transform the e-textbooks. Now, you know, I've got kids in college, three kids in college. And let me tell you, the books, folks, those are expensive books. That is a group that has cornered a market place that uh, and, and nothing would be better than being able to figure out how to penetrate that market get those books hopefully they're going to be able to get the uh, price of those books down now what the story says is that they're first going to focus on uh, high school uh, area i wanted to focus on college but of course that that's for me but you know so cool with regard to just simply the way that technology continues to move forward and 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 to that end you know we talk about this being the money game and the real question you know questions control your focus. And so one of the questions, since I'm speaking about kids, since really Nick and I were talking about his kids, if you will, last evening, and his father obviously has got him involved. Then we had a cool call. You know, I did the, Tom, uh, the show with Tom from 5 to 6 last night, and uh, just some great conversations from our callers that we had in there. We had Bud's son that had uh, called in, you know, and so it's really all about the children. Really, isn't it always about the children? And the question that I ask for you is, you know, what type of investment would you make in your child? Maybe they are art-oriented, and I'm telling you, somebody that is art-oriented absolutely wants to be able to understand the money game because they probably intuitively would be able to see these patterns, visually look at a, a chart on a screen, and they would be able to see these patterns. What investment would you be willing to make today so that in their life they understood how to play this money game so that they could get to an area of financial freedom so much faster? How would that feel for you if you knew that as your child was moving on, if you will, that they actually had the ability to absolutely pursue whatever passion it was that they wanted and was irrespective of what type of income that you could draw there because they knew how to play the money game. They were on their own. They understood how to live with inside their means and take some capital that you were able to help them create, provide. You know, most of you probably, as they're young, they get presents, they get gifts. You probably are putting money away. You're saving that money, if you will, for college. I know I did. I know we did. And so what you'd like to be able to do is be able to start learning how to take that stockpile and learn about the markets, because the markets are going to go up and down. We have proven to you time and time again, you don't want, this is not a buy and hold strategy. It's not a buy and hold market. It hasn't worked for the last 10 years. Why would you think that it's going to work for the next 10 years? And if it does, if we get into a buy and hold phase, if we get into a Super Bowl market, if you will, then life will be beautiful. Will that time come? Absolutely, because there's cycles. There are cycles. But what investment would you make in your children, your grandchildren, you can teach them this game. I know it may look a little foreign to you, but it's really about learning, you know, swing points, which are very easy to identify. Don't get caught up into the swing points that are inside the middle of the larger ones. Just simply, if we're taking a look at the ES Mini, you know, a swing point here is where you see a definite directional change in the market. You want to take a look at the ones that have had the largest change, if you will, that really stick out at you. If you're taking a look at the ES Mini, you'd see one right down here that came in on August the 9th. You know how the market was cascading down. This was one of those beautiful waterfalls that you would see in Molokai. You know, if you were over in Hawaii and you were maybe taking one of the helicopter tours and they were touring, touring you around Molokai where they filmed a good portion of uh, Jurassic Park, 
if you will. So you can see that waterfall, and then you can see the market changes direction starts moving upwards. That's a swing point, and there's plenty of them out here. But just looking at the ones that are of significant, the next significant one would be where the market turned up here, right in this September 1st uh, area, September uh, 1st, uh, maybe it was the uh, 31st of August, if you will. You can see the market turn. You know, you've got that high. You can see you got another swing point down here, October 4th. Where's the next one that you would look at as you're looking at the chart, folks? You would come all the way up here into this October 27th. You know, October 27th for us was an important area. Why? Because of a number of, there was some, a very strong astro uh, date that was out there from October 27th, if you will. Uh, we can also see that you had a change in market trend, you know, where the market moved all the way down into the November 25th time frame, right when we were coming back, uh, right after we had all, not all, but most of us had eaten a bunch of turkey, if you will, a bunch of, a bunch of uh, stuffing, dressing, uh, you name it. You know, most of us just stuffed ourselves, maybe watched the uh, football, the Lions, uh, the Dallas Cowboys. And there was a swing point that was created on Friday, if you will, as most people were out shopping. Then you've got, so I can show you swing points, and it's just a matter of taking a ruler and drawing expansions and contractions between those things, folks. So think about your kids. What investment would you be willing to make in your kids, let alone yourself, in order to be able to get to financial freedom? Come up with some strong reasons why there, folks. You'll take action. I promise you, you'll take massive action. 877-927-6648. We get back, we'll go see how this market's going to pop or drop. We'll be right back. Attention business owners, managers, and entrepreneurs. Studies show that 1 in 25 businesses last 10 years and less than 1% of all businesses generate $5 million in annual revenues. Would you like to learn the skills that separate these businesses from all of the rest? It isn't about working 10 times harder. It's about working 10 times smarter. And I can show you how. Absolutely free, no strings attached. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFN.com, past owner of businesses at Disney, Universal Studios, Vegas Casinos, and top destinations throughout the world. Join me Wednesday, January 25th at 6.30 p.m. for a one-hour online webinar where I'll teach you how to get your dream clients, get past the one person that stands between you and the most influential people in the world, and show you the three ways to grow your business exponentially. Go to the front page of TFN.com under Breaking News and click on Pathways to Growth, where preparation meets opportunity. That's Wednesday, January 25th. Register now for your Pathway to Growth, part of our Go Long America program on the homepage of TFN.com. Decisions shape your destiny. Shape yours now. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you want to get great trade setups in equity as well as the option market, come over to TFNN.com and test drive my daily newsletter, Market Insights, for two weeks absolutely free. Each trade setup comes with a profit projection as well as stock placement. Included in Market Insights is a Twitter alert service. This allows you to take advantage of intraday setups. Volatility is back in the markets. What does that mean to you? To me, it spells short-term opportunity each and every day. The days of trending up on light of volume are gone. We have come off the highs with volume across the globe. Don't get caught in a complacency trap. Many of the indices have given back two months of trading in one week. We have a trader's market. You can take advantage of this trader's market by test driving my daily newsletter, Market Insights, free for two weeks. Market Insights will give you the edge you're looking for in the markets. Go to TFNN.com under Newsletter. Hit the Market Insight tab for your two-week free test drive right here, right now. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now what type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? 
No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley of Smith Barney believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower your volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angelo O'Brien, financial advisor and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. You've got the Dow lead the charge up nine points right now. S&P's down three. Composite uh, looks like down about uh, eight points. Small caps down one and a half. NDX down eight. Being led down by uh, Google. Google trading down 49 bucks. You know, we'll take a spin around and uh, see uh, you know how Google's trading. you got Microsoft trading up 74 cents right now. Microsoft is showing us. You've been listening for the last uh, week or so. We've been uh, showing you the strength inside Microsoft. We'll go take a look at uh, that chart as well. You've got uh, Amgen up 14 cents. Uh, those are the uh, top, uh, those are three of the top uh, 10 inside the NDX 100. What I do have on my screen, though, is I've got the uh, Euro US dollar currency pair. We're looking at this chart on a 120 minute basis. And, you know, sometimes, folks, when you, you, you take a look at what stops you from actually taking action, oftentimes people will say it's resources. You know, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough education. I don't have enough this. I don't have enough that. The reality is, all you need to do is throw all that out. You just need to be resourceful. Let's say you're an artist, if you will, and you're still saying, yeah, Steve, I hear what you're saying, but I am just not a math person. Well, be resourceful. Look at the charting application that I use here, Ensign Windows, if you will, and this does a lot of the math for you. It's just about using tools that would be like, you know, using the right reed in your sax or your trombone or your trumpet, if you will, making, you know, and how, how much difference is it using the right reed? How much difference is it using the right brush when you're painting something? Now, I don't know because I have trouble painting stick man, folks, but, but I can, I can visualize and I can see patterns that are coming ahead, you know, so I'm working on the art side, but here's a software package that does all the math for you. It identifies swing points and it absolutely will tell you what type of contractions or expansions you're looking at. What I have in these blue squares, even though it may be a little difficult to read, these are simply going to be, and what I have on my screen here, the way I've made it so that it's uniform, so that when you're taking a look at it, it can help you. If it's a red line, it's a retracement between a swing point. What does that mean? Well, if we take a look at the swing point right out here, it doesn't really matter the date. It happens to be around 2 in the afternoon or so on January 3rd. You can see that from this swing point all the way to the high that was made yesterday on the 120-minute chart coming into sometime around the 3 or 4 o'clock time frame. What you'll see is that's a .786 retracement. That's one of the numbers that all you have to do have done on a pad of paper. Eventually, you memorize that number, if you will. Then you can see if you come up above it, you can see there happens to be a .618 retracement. Well, you know that coming into any kind of uh, swing point math, when you're taking a look at retracements, when you have multiple Fibonacci numbers that uh, that uh, meet at the same point, you know where they're having a little bit of party because all the fibs are getting together, maybe to grab a beer or what have you, or maybe change market direction because that's really what happens here when the fibs get together they say you know this is our line in the sand it happens to be a line on the chart if you will well you can take a look at an expansion here you know the the primary expansion numbers that I have you take a look at are 1.272 1.618 sometimes you have to give it a little leverage you'll see in this case here it happens to be 1.414 
That is what I'll call a minor Fibonacci number. But as you start doing your charts, you know, you'll start seeing these. You'll start seeing the harmonics. If you see 1.414 showing up on the charts, if you had this type of tool or any other type of tool that you have, what you'll see is just a normal breathing pattern that exists with inside that instrument that you're trading. Well, what we also have is this line right here. Here's an expansion off of a swing point coming into the 8 a.m. time frame. Looks like on the 17th. January the 17th, and you're going to see 3.216. What does, what does that remind you of? If I was going to say what number would 3.216 be close to, you would say, Steve, that's a slice of hot apple pie. You know, it's go long America, if you will. Well, so you've got pie. Now, pie happens to be one of those expansions that when you see that, in this case here, you saw that coming together along with these retracements, that would have been telling you if you were long the euro, if you were long the euro, that what you should see is some type of retracement. This area right here is a real strong line drawn to the sand. Now, you want to be able to mark that because when that area doesn't hold, let's assume that it doesn't hold. Let's assume that it's going to make an A, B, C up, and all that it's going to do right now on this 120-minute chart is do a retracement because that's a possibility. The normal place, in essence, for this to pull back now is going to be the .382 area. That would just simply be a normal retracement. It hasn't been able to get down there. Now look, this is a chart of 120 minutes, two hour, two hour bars. That's what each of these bars are. But what I want to be able to show you is I want to be able to show you the power of math, both contractions and retracements, and be resourceful, folks. If you say you don't have the education, you happen to be coming from, let's say, that art area, if you will, and you say, I would love to trade. I would love to put my money to work because I don't want to earn 2%. I don't want to have my money. I don't want to loan my money to this government, if you will, and get back a couple of percent. I don't want to loan money to 30 years to anybody. I want to make a loan to myself. I want to go ahead and invest in myself and be able to learn this and put my money to work. I want to learn the money game. Or you want to be able to do that for your children or your grandchildren. What better time for them to start so that they could go pursue all their passions in life? Because what you'll probably tell them is, don't go into a business just to chase it for the money. How many of us, if you were going to give advice to your children, you would tell them, go chase their dreams. Hopefully that's what you want to do, and hopefully you're showing them ways that they can do that. Well, you need money, right? You absolutely have to have money is a good thing. What I hate, and I don't use that word hate too often, what I really dislike about when I turn on a news station or media or what have you, and the attacks on money, the attacks on money, folks, you know, and I'm not talking about, this is, this goes both sides, if you will, but attacks on money, are you kidding me? Folks put money to good use. Think about what you would do, how you would invest in yourself, what you could do for others. That's what we do around here at TFN. All of us are committed to each of you. We want to be able to improve your life. In my case, my mission when I go to sleep and when I wake up in the morning is to absolutely provide you with tools that will take you to financial freedom. And if you're already there, that's a wonderful thing. I want you to be able to help me to take it to others. And I want you to not have any fear about continuing to bring up on more money to do more good for so many people that are out there. So it's really, I can, the, there are tools out there. You can be resourceful. You can absolutely be resourceful. And you can use these tools because what happens is you have a pattern in life. I will bet dollars to donuts. I don't even know where that came from. But I'll bet you dollars to donuts that you likely, this morning, if you took a look at from the time you woke up to where you're at right now, you relive that yesterday, the day before, the day before that, or what have you. Now, maybe you've got a pattern where it's every other day. You've got certain cycles, if you will. But the way that you do anything is the way you do everything, folks. And that happens in the market. And somehow, is this art imitating math or math imitating art? Folks, it works both ways. And for whatever reason, the Fibonacci summation index, which are nothing more than these numbers, these 382618786s, is, folks, they are beautiful, beautiful things. So I know I've been, it's, it's fabulous Friday, and I'm trying to unleash some of that energy, if you will, which is almost really an impossible thing to do. Let's go take a look at, let's go take a look at Google. So let's uh, see how Google is trading here, and uh, because Google should be trading down to an area of support, and the question is going to be what kind of volume is it that Google's got? And you can see Google, and right now the bulls, if you take a look at today's candle, you know, you can see how, well, this is, let me see here. Is this possible? Yeah, we got Google. Nah. What's going on with my uh, chart here? 
Okay, so I think I've got a, a little connection problem. Now, this is how the universe, you know, tests Steve out in the uh, morning. Uh, let me see. Let me just see where Google is trading. Google is trading down 53 bucks. So I know that I can fix this. It's going to take a, a quick little uh, minute here to uh, fix this, uh, folks. Oh, I probably had. Now, it was a daily chart. Ah, you got to love life. So, uh, all right, we've gotten this fixed here. We'll see if uh, Google pops up on my screen with some refreshed information. And uh, let me uh, see here. Jeez Louise. It, uh, it, it has not. That is very, very interesting. So right now, let's see, where is Google trading down to? So you can take a look at it on your chart while I'm trying to get my chart here to uh, work. Don't know what the uh, problem is here, but you got Google trading down at 585 and at 585 on Google. So I can just come to a chart here and show you where Google is uh, likely trading. It's going to be right here at the swing point from July, the or high volume breakout, if you will, from July the 18th. One of the other things you want to do when you're taking a look at a, a chart, folks, is you want to, in my case here, you take a look at the bottom piece of the chart. And the bottom piece is going to show you all the volume bars. And the very first thing your eye should go to is that highest volume day that you see out here. Well, it really sticks out in the case of Google. And if you go back and you take a look at July the uh, 18th, what you will see is Google traded down to a uh, the low on that. And that was a gap up. And the gap, folks, what I'm talking about, you can see this voided space that we have that's in here. And so Google gapped up with volume. So the bulls were really in control of uh, Google that day. That might have been another earnings release uh, for all I know. And what you had from a volume standpoint coming into Google there, you had 13 million shares coming in there. The low on that, 597.62. Uh, You've got uh, Google trading at 584.99 uh, right now. So it's trading just below that area. And I, let's see, volume-wise, let me see if I can pull up the uh, volume-wise, even if for some reason the data is not flowing in here. So volume on Google Right now, it's got uh, looks like 240,000 shares uh, have traded. So you've got you know you've got some volume. So it's going to be interesting to see whether the bulls or the bears have got control of Google. It's going to be interesting to see you know what does the, this this volume bar that you've got out here, folks. This what this is showing you. This is showing you that you've got institutional buying because there's not enough yous and me's. I know that's poor English, if you will, but you got it. You got the idea. There's not enough of us to uh, all have decided to buy on that one day, to have that type of volume going into Google or any other stock. And that's why you want to go take a look at those high volume days, because there is where you've got the institutional sell buyers and sellers. Now, they may be buying or selling with your money, because I know that 70% of the people that are listening out here, or maybe not listening right here, but 70, look, 70% 70 of the folks inside the United States have got, on average, $100,000 or more invested in their 401ks, being managed, if you will, by third parties. So, and this is a time of the year when companies are making contributions to their retirement, to their pension plans, that's working like that around cities, governments, if you will, and so that money is being put to work. Now, when we take a look at markets and how they've been moving, how they've been moving up on uh, low volume, if you will, you know, a lot of that money hasn't necessarily really come into the sidelines just yet. So. Paying attention to where Google trades today, you know, if you are bullish on Google, what you want to see it at least do is, uh, first, uh, you'd, you'd like to see it uh, uh, have less than 13 million shares, since it's already below the gap area there of July the, uh, what was that date, July the 15th. If you will, you'd like to be able to see Google close above 588.16. Uh, if we go, let's go try this out here now. Let's go see what happens if I uh, punch in IBM. See if I can get a uh, data feed. I'm really just kind of expanding it out, if you will, until I go to my break where I might have to go ahead. Yeah, we got IBM's trading okay. So uh, Google's putting the kibosh on my uh, chart there. What's up with that? You can see IBM now. IBM is gapped up uh, this morning. IBM trading out uh, at uh, 186.77. Uh, you know, they had some uh, good earnings. Uh, right now, in just the first, uh, what we're talking about, uh, 20. Seven, no, 17 minutes of trading. You've got IBM has already done 2.5 million shares. Now up at the top, up at the highs here, where IBM should be uh, headed to, uh, you've got the uh, top that was made on December the 9th, the high out there being 198.47, only 4.8 million shares. So you've got a gap up. Now, we talk about swing points, and what you want to be able to do when you're taking a look at charts, I'm going to blow this up a little bit so that you can see it, you know, and these are the intermediate swing points. So I was 
First, teaching you about taking a look at the uh, swing points uh, up at the highs and lows where there's really just simply a, an easy definitive uh, area for you to be able to target to see a swing point high, swing point low. Certainly with inside an A, B, C, D, which are just patterns that we show, or inside a range, if you will, you know, you see other swing points. Well, in this case here, you can see where the market moved up in Apple. It had uh, done a retracement uh, from the uh, highs that it had out here. And it moved up into the January 3rd time frame. Has 5.6 million shares. Those areas are just kind of like line of demarcations for us. This is an area where, as Tom has absolutely coined it, he's been able to teach us, you know, is where it releases information to us. In this case here, IBM right now today is trading into that swing point with volume. So what you'd want to see is if you're coming into that swing point with volume, you're already inside here. What that tells you is that IBM wants to at least go test the high. It doesn't have to do it today. Couldn't do it today. May do it today. And what you look at is the high on that swing point of January 3rd is 108.71. You're trading out right now. Did I say 108? I didn't mean 108, did I? I meant 188.71. Let me, let me clean these glasses off here. 188.71 is the high. You've got trading out at 187.16. You can see it's up at the top of its session. If we dive down and just take a look at uh, IBM just simply on the five minute uh, bars here, we're going to see is volume just simply come, did it come in at the open or did it uh, come in or is it continuing to come in just looking at the uh, five minute bars and I can see that, you know, my uh, computer system here is looking forward to the weekend. Apparently it wants to rest. Of course, I have just a number of things uh, running. Oh, uh, you can see in the last five minutes here where uh, they are pushing IBM up with volume as well. You can see on the open here, folks, you had uh, IBM gap up with uh, 1.4 million shares. So IBM is going after the top of that swing point, folks. 877-927-6648. You get the Dow up 37. S&P is down 1%. We'll be back in just a few. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing. But what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while actually reducing your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns, making missed opportunities a thing of the past. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Would you like to discover the next great tech stock? David White, TFNN's technology guru, has just launched his new newsletter, The Technology Insider. In his newsletter, David will be looking for those shining stars that may turn into the next Apple, Microsoft, or Cisco. David combines his technology background as a software programmer with his market skills as a successful professional trader to give you this unique newsletter. We're on the verge of the next great tech run. With the Technology Insider, you'll be in front of the run-up and not lagging behind. David is developing a long-term investment portfolio. Therefore, we're only offering the Technology Insider as an annual subscription with a remarkable price of only $395. That's right. For a little over $1 a day, you'll receive the fundamental technology wisdom and technical trading skills of the Technology Insider, David White. What are you waiting for? Go to the front of TFNN.com, click on the link on the front page, sign up for your two-week free trial, and become a Technology Insider today. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. 
I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we pay you more for converting your jewelry to cash. Let's go to uh, Brian in New Jersey. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I uh, just want to let you know I did uh, give you some jewelry. Uh, my jeweler offered me uh, about $650. But you get a check in the mail tomorrow for about 1200 At Tiger Metal Exchange, it's all about honesty when converting your jewelry to cash. Okay, let's go to Paul in Florida first. Hey, Paul, what's going on? Well, I want to commend you on the Tiger Metal Exchange. I just did a deal with you guys the other day. Oh, good. I'm very happy. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Now, yeah. did you sell us jewelry or did you buy coins off us? Yeah, I sold you jewelry. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. See, what we weighted at was less than you guys said, so, you know, you're totally honest. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we give you the tools to value your gold, and it's absolutely free. Call 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. We've created the easiest, safest, and most honest cash for gold process. Tiger Metal Exchange. It's the only call you need to make. Catch Tom O'Brien and Steve Rhodes as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. The Money Masters, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Thanks so much for joining me. And stay tuned because coming up after this show, you've got Tom and I doing the Money Masters show. Then Basil Chapman from 11 to 12. Nico Dehan, who's going to get his fit 12 to 1. Then you've got David White that will be in from 3 to 4. The warm-up band for the Tom O'Brien show. He's going to be playing some music, some hits of the, uh, of the day, if you will, from 4 to 6. And just to show you that, uh, you know, how this stuff works. I've got up on my screen here right now. THS, uh, that is Treehouse Foods. Have no idea what they do. I'm going to guess that they're in the food business, if you will. But they are uh, down today. Treehouse Foods is trading down uh, $7.80, down 12%. And it's so important to be able to take a look at your portfolio. If you just simply had the ability to go take a look at a charting package and you took a look at where your stocks were at and you wanted to understand where your risk was in case there was some bad news or something happened, what you would do, just like when we took a look at the Google chart that uh, wasn't behaving, but during the break I took it out behind the woodshed, I taught it a lesson, and you'll see when we come back, it's working now, if you will. And maybe it was just me. I just had to clean my glasses, actually. I think that's all it was. And how this stuff works, if you take a look at Treehouse Foods, what you'll see right now where it traded down to, because if you're looking at my screen, you're going to easily be able to see this high-volume uh, day here. Now, this was a high-volume breakdown, if you will, where uh, Treehouse Foods had gapped down. Uh, it was on June 23rd. Gap down had uh, 2.5 million shares. The price on this, because you can see my uh, cross here, you can see it going uh, right across there. Uh, the low on the uh, Treehouse Foods was 5.5410. Uh, high on it was uh, high was 54.34. So not a lot of uh, movement, uh, if you will, that day. And where does it come down to? Where is the area of support? Because when you see something like that, that's not enough us's, not enough you's, not enough me's, if you will, to buy it. So there's an institutional uh, investor that's in there. In in June of 2011, you know, they're in there. They're likely with some, some pension funds, if you will, some 401k money. It's more of that buy and hold, if you will. And so why does it come down to this area? Because right now what you're seeing is you're seeing this stock here, THS, Treehouse Foods, if you will, you know, being uh, supported by whoever was in there at this stage. Now, you got some volume. You absolutely have some volume uh, that is uh, taking place because we've only been trading for about 26 minutes, and you've got 941,000 uh, shares. I'll bet you when we come back and take a look at this, now, it's going to fall off my screen, but if, if we did come back and take a look at it, this is going to be a higher volume day than that day. Now, 
Let's go and take a look at the uh, stock that I took out to the woodshed. Let's go take a look at that chart. We'll see how uh, Google is actually uh, behaving there. And you can see Google right now, that line that I was showing you earlier right here where we had the uh, swing point, you can see it's trading just below it from a volume standpoint. Uh, right now, in the first, let's say, 30 minutes, you've got uh, 3 million shares at 3 million going into uh, the uh, a volume down here of uh, 13 million so you can see that uh, Google has got some volume today and uh, and also where it's traded down to it's right now it's traded down into this gap it's coming into this swing point you know we were talking about IBM and swing points so right now what Google's doing is coming into this November 21st area that only has 1.5 million shares you know it looks to me like Google wants to at least uh, get down uh, into that area that will continue to put pressure on the uh, NDX uh, 100 if we uh, see, what else did I have up on my screen here uh, with regard to what's popping or what's dropping? I had GE. Okay, so I pulled GE. GE came out with uh, numbers today. Uh, GE trading out at 1895. Uh, now, this uh, stock here, folks, you know, we're talking about the ability to have a tool like this where you can just simply turn it on and it'll show you expansions and contractions. Well, if you could really see here, you'd see a 0.786. You'd see a 1.618 coming right into a swing point and an area of support. Oh, it is a beautiful thing. Stay tuned, folks. If not, have a great weekend. Live with gratitude. I'll see you Monday morning. And for those staying tuned, I'll see you in about eight minutes. Have a great day, folks.